वेलकम टू ए टी सी टुडे वी आई टू डिस्कस केस ऑफ साउंड ऑफ ओल्ड फीमेल हो प्रेजेंटेड टू रियर विद द कंपनीज ऑफ गिडीनेस अराउंड ओके स्टार्ट सर ओके ओके साउंड ऑफ इज ओल्ड फीमेल हो इज प्रेजेंट टू रियर विद द कंपनीज ऑफ गिडीनेस फॉर वन डे ओके ऑन इनिशियल टेंसिंग एंड असेसमेंट पेशेंट वाज कॉन्शियस ओरिएंटेड सर यार वे अपीयर्स टू बी पैटेंट नो सेक्रीशन एंड सर्वेक्स पेन वाज नॉर्मल ऑन ब्रीथिंग बायोटल एलेंट्री वाज ई either and the voltage uh, symmetric chest wall movement was there with a respiratory rate of 18 cycles per minute and a saturation of 95% at the room air okay and circulation uh, patient has uh, bp of 210 by 100 ml per mercury with a heart rate of 64 per minute okay uh, disability wise uh, this is is fine uh, e4 v5 m6 uh, bilateral people equally right into light and uh, 2.5 mm okay uh, exposure wise the patient gib is was 182 mg per deciliter with a temperature of 98.6 fahrenheit जेंसी Mm-hmm. Or can be hypertension, emergency, also we have to uh, do further investigation. Mm-hmm. And one more thing can be like uh, can be a uh, vertigo can be there. Benign process more person vertigo can be also there for mm-hmm. this patient. Mm-hmm. So we have initially we have sent the VBG for this patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, the P P H of some point four five, P C O to thirty three, P O to forty seven, saturation of eighty uh, six, and lactate of one point five, creatinine of zero point six five. That's all. C B C was sent. Uh, mm-hmm. Point of care H V was thirteen point two. And a plate of two point six lakhs, CIP five point one. Okay. In the we we just have the electrolyte reports also came. Mm-hmm. Uh, was sodium of four thirty seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, potassium of four four point zero. Okay. Uh, on further examination, patient uh, does have any other weakness or uh, things was not not there. Mm-hmm. Like any limb or limb weakness or attacks attacks here mm-hmm. or any swelling or space those things were not there. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, patient doesn't have any nystagmus also. Mm-hmm. Uh, Position testing came to be negative only. So mm-hmm. the patient was started on a oral antihypertensive for no for this patient. Uh, um, before that, uh, anything from the history? What are uh, things you should be asking a patient with giddiness? Uh, how long the giddiness was there? Like okay. like what it is episodic or any? It is moving with the, it is changing along with the head movement or it is like uh, whether the enormous sound sound is. Sounding is uh, Mm-hmm. Or writing or her stuff is writing like those we things we have to ask. Mm-hmm. Then the important thing how it started is it relevant? Um, yeah, changing to her position or it is there. No, then was there any trauma history before before the onset? Was there any actual positional change? Uh, no sir, no his stuff uh, head trauma at all. Okay, so uh, spontaneous onset? Yes, spontaneous onset right. only. Any other associated symptoms? Vomiting? Nothing. No sir, no his stuff nausea, vomiting, nothing, nothing was there. Okay. So you have basically ruled out what all things now? We have ruled out a head injury. Okay, um, we cannot and, uh, rule out, but less likely at this point likely, from clinical examination. Peripheral Hyper- causes you are feeling less likely. Or mm-hmm. hmm? uh, hyperglycemia is one of the causes also ruled out for this patient. Okay. And uh, anemia is also not there. Anemia, mm-hmm. hyperglycemia, uh, dehydration. Uh, Uh, ECG also was taken. ECG is fine. You know, uh, normal signs are there only. No arrhythmia was there. Mm-hmm. So all these medical medical causes for the disease has been ruled out. Mm-hmm. And coming to the peripheral uh, causes, like persistent symptoms like uh, vestibular neuritis and labyrinthitis, we already did the positional testing. Under we have did the mm-hmm. head impressions. Those things were negative only. Mm-hmm. And uh, one more thing is the uh, posterior circulation stroke. Is, we have to rule out further. We have to we have planned for a MRI stroke protocol for this patient. Okay. Okay. And uh, we. <laughs> Orthostatic hypertension can be a cause of uh, dizziness in elderly patient, but this patient is already having a BPF two ten by hundred. So orthostatic hypertension is unlikely at this stage for this patient. Okay. So, so you proceeded with an imaging, neuroimaging. Neuroimaging can be done. Okay. Sir. What are the options available at for a vertigo evaluation? What is the ideal imaging recommended, and why? Uh, I mean, the MRI. question is basically, uh, will you go for a CT? If if at all CT and MRI is not available, is it a plain CT or an angio? Uh, if MRI is available, why MRI? 
uh, in this patient's BP is also high. Two ton by hundred is there. So there's one possibility of post irreversible uh, encephalitis. No, press is one possibility. So the thing and also like uh, post circulation stroke, we have to rule out. So what's so the choice? Uh, It'll be an MRI. MRI brain. Both diagnoses which you the, told will not be picked up in a CT. Mm. Okay, both press and brainstem strokes will not be easily picked up in acutely in a CT. Okay, so both will need an uh, MRI brain only. Okay, so MRI was done for this patient or not? Yeah, it was done, sir. And uh, no bleed and no uh, infarct nothing was there. Okay, MRI so uh, positional test was negative, neuroimaging was negative, patient yes, has an elevated blood pressure with vertigo, right? Yes, sir. Uh, other labs were negative. Other labs were negative. Only. No signs of any infection, nothing. Mm-hmm. The electrolytes were grossly fine. fine no only. arrhythmias also. No arrhythmias. Okay, so how will you approach them? Like what's the next line of management? Next line of management, uh, uh, we have started the patient on a... Uh, uh, BD in for the BD test and uh, we have started the oral antidepressant. BP, BP is high, no? BP is told us We have started the oral antidepressant. 210 by 100, sir. 210 by 100? 210 by 100. Okay. So now the patient, we know that the patient is having accident type of right? From the history perspective, what are things you need to uh, ask when a patient has accident type uh, we are whether uh, the patient has any patients already known case of hypertensive or not, then we have to check whether the patient was taking the tablets regularly or not, whether there's any missed doses is there or not. Okay. Was so, so, there anything? No, sir. The patient haven't missed any dose. Patient is a non hypertensive. Patient is a non hypertensive and the patient is already taking uh, almizotan uh, and uh, uh, sildipin tablet the patient was taking. Mm. Almizotan and sildipin. The heart rate was 60s, no? Patient is not on the uh, blockers. Not only beta blockers or anything, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers not there. Mm, no, only these two tablets the patient was taking. Okay. Fine. Then, any changes of hypertension in the ECG? Uh, no, sir. Nothing. No LVH features. No, 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 no changes was there. We are expected to see the concern in LVH those things we expected to see, but in this case we haven't seen that finding also. Okay, fine. So there is no drug uh, default, but the patient is coming with an elevated BP. Okay, mm-hmm. then what all other other history when you when, what, no, by the way, how will you measure the BP properly? Like what all I things think. you need to uh, factor in when you when you measure a BP in a patient? Uh, ideally, the patient, uh, we, we have to keep the uh, spermium amber at the level of the heart while we'll measuring the BP. And it is, uh, ra- ra- right now, the thing is like 24 hours ambulatory BP Measuring is is uh, at least to check the hypertension. It's a new diagnosis. Yeah. You have to, to take uh, three the minutes. The patient has come suddenly and all. So what are the prerequisites? We have to make the patient calm first. Good. Because like uh, while coming, they will be in a panic. So that time, so like they will be having uh, more BP. Mm-hmm. And uh, if there's any pain is there. Mm-hmm. So we have to reduce the pain also. So because okay. uh, the pain itself, we may really increase the patient BP. Mm-hmm. So after reducing all these things, we have to check the BP. Mm-hmm. And is it possible we have to ch- take uh, three BP readings. Mm-hmm. Like uh, one BP at the time of arrival. And after like calm, calm with the patient, then we mm-hmm. have to take another set of BP. Mm-hmm. So like that, we have to see and we have to take an average of those things. Mm-hmm. So it will be better. So, so sitting posture? Sitting, huh? sitting posture. Uh, sitting okay, and, better, sir. Okay, and uh, the cup size, how will you determine the cup size? Uh, the cup size it should be like uh, it should be covering uh, two third. Uh, so the bladder should be covering at least 80% of, of the arm, arm, arm circumference. Arm okay, circumference. then. And uh, not else. Like at least, as you told, at least 30 minutes of uh, rest is mm-hmm. ideally needed before uh, looking at the BP. Then. Should have avoided any caffeine and things like that, ideally. Okay, hmm? okay now you are measuring and uh, what what part of the stethoscope you, you can use for measuring BP? The bell or the diaphragm? You can use the diaphragm. Uh, ideally, uh, you can use both. Okay, okay fine. Then, mm. anything else while measuring? So, as you told, like three readings ideally you will take and you will recheck. Fine. Can you? Okay, the patient also, since the, there's no other uh, end down damages for this patient, like the patient uh, was constantly monitored, and patient uh, even output was fine only. This, even, this didn't have any anuria mm-hmm. and those things, and the patient's urea was also fine only, and the mm-hmm. uh, patient uh, vision was also fine. So, you are trying to tell about end organ damages. Right? damages. What are the end organ damages you expect with axial hypertension? Uh, acute heart failure. So, you can start from head to foot, kind of thing. Okay. So. okay. Uh, the cranial patient may have intracranial hemorrhage mm-hmm. can be there and mm-hmm. the post-reversible encephalopathy syndromes can be there mm-hmm. and the patient can have uh, 
papilledema. Then come to the cardiovascular system, patient may have acute pulmonedema, patient may have acute heart failure can be also there. And acute kidney injury is one possibility. These are the most common findings which we expect in a patient with elevated BP. In this patient, since the patient was having only giddiness, was there an MRI stroke protocol? For the area storage, the patient doesn't have any bleed or any infection. So two, two more things you need to remember is cyotic dissections and uh, pregnancy related okay. uh, elevated BP. Okay. The main things you covered. Okay. Uh, so uh, the bleed or hemorrhage has been rolled out by the MRI stroke protocol. Uh -huh. And for this patient, we had to do the fundus scoping like uh, we had to do. Uh -huh. And uh, we have get out of the open, they have did, and they have told like there's no features as of any. Uh, any other hypertensive changes in in front of scopy? Nothing we told. Nothing we got sir. Okay, come nickel. Echo was done. ECG is fine and echo was done and echo also we didn't find any features. And the patient's respiratory is fine and patient's saturation is also fine only. And the bilateral basal A and T everything is fine. So there is no crepes or anything. So it rules to the pulmonary edema for this patient. And the patient all four and BB is also fine only. Mm -hmm. So, aortic uh, dissection is unlikely in this patient. Now, the patient doesn't have any abdominal pain also. Because mm -hmm. any, if I if I suspect aortic dissection, patient will be having classical pain will be there. Mm -hmm. Abdominal pain will be there. Mm -hmm. will be relating to the middle of the back. Those things are not there in this mm -hmm. patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, patient, you don't put his point. And your is also in within the range only. So, the it itself has no acute renal injury for this patient. Okay. Uh, then... What are the yes, usual targets? Or how will you decrease the BP when the BP is elevated in a patient? Okay. Uh, if a patient is present to us with acute hypertension emergency, that would like the features of intracranial hemorrhage is there, na, then if uh, if the features of a uh, stroke, like any acute theming stroke is there, uh -huh. in that case we have to uh, decrease the BP be below 185 by 100 if we are planning to go for a fibrinolysis. Uh -huh. But if we are not going to plan to go for fibro anti fibrinolysis, we can leave the BP like uh, less than 210 by 100 we can maintain. Uh -huh. If above that we have to or not two, two, mm -hmm. 210 by 100 we have to maintain. Mm -hmm. Above that we have to intervene and we have to reduce the BP. Okay, that is where the acute stroke comes. Second thing is like we have to maintain the mean atrial pressure of 60, 65, above 65. Acutely? Hmm. Not acutely. Acute reduction, you are not going to target 65, no? Acute reduction would be like... Uh, so, general principle is you can decrease how much percentage of MAP in first one hour? 25 percentage of... Uh, 15 to 20 percentage. 15 to 20 percentage in first one hour. First one hour. First one hour. And first one hour. First one hour. And first one hour. And first one hour. And first one hour. Of MAP. That is your generic target. Yes, sir. Then you can go for a disease specific target. Mm -hmm. Okay, disease specific target is what you told for stroke. Mm -hmm. Then likewise you have disease specific target for intracranial bleed mm -hmm. also. So what how, what's the target BP in intracranial bleed? Uh, intracranial bleed uh, target BP is uh, uh, less than uh, up to 140, 100 we can maintain it. Yeah, uh, you treat when it is more than 160 by 90. So what's the problem in decreasing the BP in neurological problem, neurological issues? Uh, Silver so articulation will be affected and further there will be like the penumbral region you won't get enough blood supply. So apart from you know, the patient make for more neurovascular injury can be there. Okay, okay. So you told about both the intracranial things. Other uh, in aortic dissection, what is your target BP? Uh, aortic dissection, the target BP should be uh, less than uh, 120 by 100, sir. Okay, fine. Anything else? You have targets? Any other diagnosis? Uh, I think back, remaining thing it's all generic only. Okay, oh, your fear chromosome is that all. Okay. Now coming to the choices, what are the IV antihypertensive agents we have at our disposal? Uh, IV antihypertensive agents mostly we will be using uh, Levitol and uh, Nitroglycerin. Okay. But uh, uh, Levitol we can uh, we can start as like uh, 10 mg IV over 2 to 3 minutes followed by uh, 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 1 to 2 mg per minute in which we can start maximum dose of 300 mg. Uh -huh. Raise with the Levitol. Uh -huh. And if you are going with uh, NTG, we will be starting uh, at 5 max per minute and we can go up to 
20 mix per minute like every 3 to 5 minutes we have to check the bp and we can update the update rate it up to mm. 20 mix even after 20 mix per minute also patient bp is not is control no? then we, we can go up to 200 mix but the two like uh, we have to constantly monitor the bp because like uh, up to 20 mix up to, uh, certain limit like ntg will be like you put on veno dilator uh-huh. but uh, at higher doses it becomes a uh, dilator the arteries also so when we are going for higher doses we have to constantly under monitor the bp Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and how long you can give NTG usually? NTG usually like 24 to 40 dose because after that uh, uh, tachyphylaxis will be there and uh, it will be in high dose and it won't, uh, the effects won't be there properly. Okay. What all conditions you will definitely go for labetalol and what all conditions you will prefer NTG over labetalol? Mm. Yeah. So basically it will be like... Mm. Uh, Lebitol will be like uh, more, most of the cases uh, we have uh, NTG will be our first performance and Lebitol will be mm-hmm. our second thing. and many in uh, eclampsia and pre-eclampsia. Mm-hmm. Oh, so uh, basically as a rule uh, you can uh, go with Lebitol as the first choice in most cases other than you are uh, a patient with heart failure and all. Uh, heart failure. Uh, okay, there definitely NTG will have an upper hand, mm-hmm. patient with pul- presenting with pulmonary edema. Definitely I'll go for an NTG. Most other indications uh, Lebetalol, as long as the heart rate is good, we will go with Lebetalol. Mm. Okay. Okay, sir. Fine. Then. And also in a sympathetic And crisis. especially uh, with raised ICP, oh, is there any problem with the NTG? Ideally, mm. NTG is not, indica- not a preferred choice in raised ICP. Okay. Okay. And also in sympathetic crisis, okay. uh, in that case also like uh, beta blockers are l- have a ready content addiction will be there. Okay. Uh, so like if you f- sympathetic crisis, it is caused uh, what is by... What is Do we have it here? Sir? Nicardipin. Uh, nicardipin we can use. Uh, nicardipin will be uh, mostly common, we can use as a first line agent in acute ischemic strokes. Uh-huh. Nicardipin, is it Nicardia or what is Nicardia? Nifidipin. Uh, Nicardia is Nifidipin and Nicard, um, people usually confuse both. Okay. You don't have IV uh, Nicardipin here. Okay. Mm. And if a uh, sympathetic crisis is then uh, the better option is like uh, pentamine we have to go. Alpha, mm. according to uh, alpha blocker we have, to go. Uh, we have to go. If it is not available, you can go with the NTG. And uh, in, uh, unlike other areas like sympathetic crisis, it is mostly it is caused by uh, using a cocaine or amphetamine, then benzodiazepine can be used as a first line drug. Mm-hmm. And also in uh, acute kidney injuries also, uh, we have to go with clavidipine and nicadipine. And uh, there, uh, diuretics we have to avoid in acute kidney injury. Mm-hmm. Clonidine, what is the other problem? Like, uh, Clonidine, uh, the problem is like, uh, it is very short uh, short acting and uh, patient reboot hypertension, hypertension is uh, more common. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fine. Anything else? Uh, that's all, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oral antihypertensives, if you can tell something about it, like how will you start? Uh, oral uh, antihypertensives, if patient is already taking any oral antihypertensives, we can go with the things. Uh, but if the, if the first time patient is presenting to us, that is like uh, undiagnosed, the first time they come in, we can uh, start the diuretics, can be started in check. Okay. And after the cloth, uh, in diuretics, uh, cloth, uh, Hydrochlorothiazide, those things mm-hmm. can be started. Mm-hmm. Then if that uh, one of the bees also like is not uh, containing the bees, then we, can, we have to add a second line drug. Okay. Uh, second line drug, we can go with a beta blocker, provided the patient doesn't have any contraindication for beta blockers. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you.